Morning Beaville, this is Cindy Clark from Pack B TV, and I'm here with an Ask the Expert episode with Guiding Eyes for the Blind Guests, and we have Kate Riley and Mary Ankh and yeah. Sully. Yeah. Welcome and thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, Mary, I know you've been doing this a long time. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering if you could tell our audience a little bit about the group, how long sure. you've been involved, you know, the usual stuff that people are interested in knowing. Sure. So Guiding Eyes for the Blind was founded in 1954. Um, it's a nonprofit agency which has a mission um, to connect exceptional dogs with people uh, with vision loss for greater independence. We've been puppy raisers and volunteers with Guiding Eyes since 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, over that period of time, we've had 14 dogs come into our home. Um, as a puppy raiser, we take them when they're about eight weeks old. We teach them good house manners, basic obedience, and socialization. So socialization is all about taking them out and about so they can learn about the world. So while they're with us, um, they're getting experiences that will be a reference library for them in their future work as guide dogs. Um, it's a lot of fun, um, which is why uh, we do it over and over and over again. Um, it's a lot of fun working with the dogs, seeing them grow as puppies into young adults. Um, it's a lot of fun to see what they do. You know, if they become guide dogs, if they choose a different career, um, and some dogs, their best job is to just be a family pet. Um, and then it's a great group of volunteers. So, well, how do you get how, like how do you get a dog to begin with? I mean, where do these dogs come from? Are they special? Are they raised specifically for this purpose, or bred, or they yes. are? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, Guiding Eyes breeds all their own dogs. Um, that way, they have health history. They have a temperament um, that they're looking for in a future guide dog. Um, when the puppies are about eight weeks old, they have a little testing process to see if that eight week old puppy is even a good candidate mm -hmm. to be a guide dog. Now what do you do to see if they are a good candidate? So they're looking for um, their resiliency. Um, you know, they're a little puppy. So little things are gonna be, you know, new and exciting to them. So they look to see how the puppy reacts, um, you know, if they can bounce back. They look to see um, if they like to be with people how they react when they're around other dogs, um, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Now, is the, the, the training, I know we're going to get into with Kate uh, mm -hmm. because she's actually training Sully now. Yeah. So it's a work in progress, but maybe you can just kind of give us a little indication as to the type of training that's involved as they get older, too. Sure. So anybody who joins as a volunteer with Guiding Eyes, um, before a puppy is even placed with a new volunteer, we have training classes. Um, so we really, you know, like to talk about Guiding Eyes Mission, um, the specific relationship-based training that Guiding Eyes uses um, with their dogs, and, you know, to make sure that it really is a good fit um, for the new volunteer. Once a puppy is placed in the Central New York region, um, we have group training classes. So a few times a month, we will get together um, with all of our raisers, you know, whether they're mm -hmm. brand new raisers or even those people who have raised, you know, 30 or more puppies um, still come to the training classes so that we're all on the same page and we're all teaching our puppies um, the same thing so that when they go back to Guiding Eyes and begin their um, formal training to be a guide dog, they all have the same base or the same foundation. Okay, well that makes yep. sense, that makes sense. Now is the training, you also do the training for actually to be a guide dog? So what we do is more of a foundation. Okay, um, all right. We, again, a lot of it goes back to that socialization, right. you know, getting them out and about different experiences. When they return back to Guiding Eyes, they'll be about a year and a half, um, maybe 20 months old. And again, they have to pass a little test, which again is looking at their temperament, their confidence level. Um, they will be placed with a professional trainer who will actually teach them 
the work that a guide dog does. Now, how long is that, that process? Is that a lengthy process as well? Or? Uh, it usually is between four to six months. Okay. Um, there's four different stages of training. Each stage gets a little more difficult along the way. Um, the last stage of training is done down in New York City. Um, you know, it's that old phrase, if you can make it there, you, you can, can make, make it, it anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and they will also work with uh, the trainer being blindfolded. So that, that in that last stage, the dog really does take on all the responsibilities of what a guide dog will do. That's amazing, amazing. Now, are, is this... Are these dogs that you have, like with the local guiding uh, guide dog uh, instruction, is that these dogs, do they stay in this area or do they go everywhere? Um, they can go anywhere. Um, so I've had a dog placed in Alabama. I've had a dog placed in um, Illinois, one in Pennsylvania. Um, another dog is out in Washington. Wow. Um, so, yep, they can... In, and in the past, there have even been um, dogs that have gone to Portugal, um, England as well. Um, so they can really end up all over the world. Is this organization nationwide, worldwide? So the headquarters is in Yorktown Heights, which is Westchester County, about an hour north of New York City. Okay. Um, so people who are looking for a guide dog, they can really come from you know, all across the nation, um, you know, some people from Canada also come down. Um, Do people, candid the candidates, they contact the main office. Mm -hmm. They say, we have a need or we know somebody that's going to have a need. Mm -hmm. do, do, you, do they have to come there and be interviewed or? So Guiding Eyes has field reps that will go out and visit them. Okay. You know, okay. in their home location, you know, get a feel of where they live and what their needs are. Um, there's a real matchmaking process between somebody who needs a guide dog and the dog itself. Um, I would imagine they have to yeah, click. They have to. Exactly. Do you ever have instances where they don't click? You know, sometimes that happens. Um, sometimes, you know, kind of what you think will will be a good match ends up um, not working out the best. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities. Some, and I actually had that with one of my dogs. Um, she, so she was placed with, with somebody different and that was the perfect match. Um, Isn't it for, we, they, they have personalities too, don't they? Yeah, Not they everybody, sure do. you know, we don't get along with everybody. So as far as the training now, this is, you're a non-for-profit, right? Correct. Now, how do you, yeah. how's it paid for? Yeah. I got, I have to believe it's very expensive. So they estimate that it's about $50,000 from, you know, the breeding to the birth, to the training, to the placement um for for one guide dog um as a nonprofit guiding eyes relies 100% on donations um so through individuals corporations um you know it's the generosity of of people that support the mission um that guiding eyes is able to do what they do do you have fundraisers around here too or we do have fundraisers okay. yep okay. um in the central new york region you know, one of the things that we do um, is our volunteers make dog toys, dog bandanas, um, you know, things like that, that we in turn sell mm -hmm. as part of our fundraising efforts. Um, oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I got to, um, so like you say, most of it's, it's not for profit, so it's donations. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody wanted to donate, where would they donate to, or sure. how would they do that? Give us your yeah. your address to do that to. Sure. Okay. So the Guiding Eyes for the Blind website is guidingeyes.org, um, and there's a wealth of information on that website. Um, how to become a puppy raiser. How if you are interested and have a need for a guide dog, um, if you wanted to make a donation, you know all of that can be found on the website. Okay, I did look at it, and you're right. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty intense. I, it, you, just about any question that you would have, mm -hmm. it can be answered right sure. there. Yes, yep. it is. Yep. It's a great cause to donate to. Um, what do you do if you if you get a dog that just doesn't cut it? Sure. So it's a lot of responsibility to be a guide dog, um, and it's not for everybody or every dog. Guiding Eyes has you know a saying that each dog chooses its own career. Um, they're very in tune to 
the dog's aptitude for different types of jobs. Um, so for a dog that doesn't quite have what it takes to be a guide dog, um, there are other career opportunities. <laughs> um, you know, just like people, mm -hmm. sometimes you think you want to do one thing, but you find out you want to do something different. Um, a lot of our dogs go into detection work with police agencies. Okay. Um, I've had a dog become a narcotics detection dog. I had another dog become an explosives detection dog. Um, so Guiding Eyes partners with Connecticut State Police, ATF. Um, there's some private agencies um, that, that are great careers for dogs that like to work, um, but just not quite Doing that wasn't this isn't work. their thing for them right maybe mm -hmm. like a little more freedom or whatever yeah well like you say mm -hmm. with people people don't like everything sure. so yeah yeah i know i know yeah. well yeah. kate me now you are you have is this your first dog is sully your first dog yes, he's my you first dog. Now, how did you get involved um so i have a love for animals and so i always want to work with animals and so this way i can I'm able to get the experience and opportunity to train a future guide dog, and I'm able to help people at the same time. Oh, very good yeah. cause, very good cause. So how long, have, how long have you had Sully? Tell us a little bit about Sully and what you do mm -hmm. with him. Yep, I've had him a little over a year now, and um, I take him to school with me, and so he sees everyone there, and he goes out and about with me. He's gone to a few trips to Florida with me. Um, Can they go on the plane? Um, I don't go fly, so okay. I drive, so he's okay. been in the car. Um, he's got a very goofy personality. Mm -hmm. Everyone he meets, he makes them laugh. Such a lovable dog. A beautiful, a beautiful yes. dog. Now, where's he get his little, his little uh, vest here? Um, that's provided for oh, us. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I can see he's having trouble relaxing here, <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, you've been doing this since he was how old? Eight weeks. Eight weeks, okay. Yes. So he's kind of been, he's kind of your best friend, mm -hmm. I would think. Yes. Everywhere, is. goes everywhere with you all the time. Yeah. Now, what type of, tra your type of training is, is, is as Mary said, primarily so socialization. And mm -hmm. now, do you have to be on the alert for certain types of behavior or behavioral issues or that type of thing? I mean, what would you, what do you watch out for to make sure that he's okay? Um, so I watch for when he interacts with other people or other dogs to make sure it's all appropriate behavior and make sure he doesn't do like any counter surfing or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you will have him, you've, he's 16 months old, you said. Now, how, mm -hmm. long, how much longer will you have him? Um, so... How much longer? Yeah, so um, most of the dogs go back to the training school anywhere between 18 to 20 months. Um, so probably, you know, this fall, he will uh, take that next step where he'll go back to the training school and start his formal training. So he, he will be assessed in a few months then? Mm -hmm. Reassessed or do a little... Yep, so mm -hmm. along the way when they're training, so they have that kind of that first assessment as eight week old puppies. Mm -hmm. Um, while they're with us in the puppy program, um, they get assessed a couple of times, um, usually at about four months old and again at about 10 months old, just to kind of see, you know, where they're at, that they're headed on, in the right direction. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, when you get to the point where, all right, so he goes in the next few months and they decide that he's going to be fine. That's when you part your ways. Yeah, I know that's good. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to, you know, remind you of the inevitable, but I would imagine of all the things, that's got to be the hardest thing to yes. do, particularly with your first dog. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard. Yeah, and I, I believe me, I sympathize, mm -hmm. I empathize, sympathize, <laughs> whatever. I've never done it, yeah. but I can only begin to imagine mm -hmm. how tough that must be. But what a uh, a sacrifice all of you make with this, because you you have to be truly committed. Mm -hmm. With when they, even to own an animal, you have to be committed. Mm -hmm. at, but to go the, this further step to help those with a tremendous need, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. sight impaired, yeah. and even with therapy dogs. Now, one more one more question here: When you're out in training, because uh, I know I've I have heard or I've learned that I never would go and and just offer to pet a dog. I would ask permission. Mm -hmm. So is that something that 
you would want people to do too with because yes. well regardless if he's mm -hmm. in training or not mm -hmm. you don't just jump in and go after an animal mm -hmm. to ask or to pet much mm -hmm. as you want to so badly mm -hmm. so you would prefer people ask if you can pet him yes because it can interfere with um his whatever he's doing and distract him okay okay yep. all right yep that makes sense so just remember that if you see somebody with a dog uh in training or not in training remember to ask the owner if the dog can be petted because mm -hmm. you just that's just polite behavior for all of us Mm -hmm. Have we? Is there anything else you want to add to this? Have we pretty much hit it all? You want to say anything else? So I'll add kind of to your your piece about when the dogs go back. Okay. Um, you know it is true they're part of the family, and it's sad to see them go, but at the same time you also have a very uh, much a sense of pride. Yes. In how much the dog has grown and how much they've learned, um, and a little bit of sense of excitement to see what's going to be the next step. Um, you know, will they kind of take that guide dog training? Um, will they go on and do some different career? Um, it's like a proud parent. Yes, <laughs> yes, it definitely is. Um, so the the satisfaction and the rewarding experience that it is, um, you know, really does make up for that. You know, even though you will feel a little sad when they go. Well, I mean, you, mm -hmm. after a while, you sort of get used to it because you know you have to get yourself in a mindset. You know that you're doing mm -hmm. a really good thing for a really good cause. And so you can, like I say, get yourself mm -hmm. in that mindset that this is a good thing to do. It's good right. for the animal. It's good mm -hmm. for you. It's mm -hmm. good for where the animal is going. So yeah. it's a win-win situation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's very rewarding to hear, um, you know, when the dogs are placed, when you hear from their partner. Are there, is there follow-up yes. where they go? Okay. Yes. So okay. we do have a chance to meet um, and talk with, you know, who they have been partnered with. Um, you know, I've been very lucky to develop a friendship with the people that um, have the dogs that I had raised. So it's, it's again, it's just so rewarding um, when you hear the stories about what they say the dogs have done for them. Well, it's a very good cause, mm -hmm. like I say, and you have people that are, they have uh, problems with sight, they have sight now, in a sense. Mm -hmm. They can be independent, they can live life in a normal, much more normal fashion. And that has to be, I mean, that has to be quite an experience mm -hmm. for a, per a person who's visually impaired to all of a sudden have the sense of freedom and the sense of life again. I, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed. I congratulate you, Thank both you. of you, on what you do, what you've Thank done, you. and the sacrifice that you make. And you know, this is this could be a potential career for you too, mm -hmm. as it has been for Mary. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure she's a wonderful teacher and a wonderful she is. mentor <laughs> for you, because I've known the family. But yeah. uh, is now what is it? Where would you want us to have people? Uh, send uh, contributions or get information. Yep. Did you want to repeat the website? Yep, yep. so it's Guiding Eyes for the Blind. GuidingEyes.org is the website. Um, also a phone number would be 315-447-5718. Um, that's my local contact number um, if anybody is also interested in more information. Well, thank you. I think we've just about hit it. I think this is, like I say, this is a great thing. And thanks again for taking time out of your very busy day. And Sully, <laughs> thank you very much. Do you, Sully. Can, Sully. Come here. You, you direct him. I don't know. Here, stand. Can you, we put our hat on? Come here. So you can show what a hero you are to everybody out there? <laughs> here, Sully. Stand. No. That's all right. That's all right. There you go. Sully's our new superstar. Thanks again, Mary. Thanks again, Kate. And thanks again, Sully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Yes. Yes, my baby. Always oh, so sweet. Oh, you are such a good baby. Yes, you are. You're so handsome.